wanted to start with a question. Has anybody here ever felt alone? Maybe them against the rest of the world, challenging the biggest problems that you have on your plate today. Has anybody felt that way? Yeah. So imagine if you have a tireless ally at your side who's amplifying your strengths, who's making your brilliance shine brighter. And that's exactly what we mean when we talk about AI as your wingman. It's the spotlight over here is on me, but it's really on you, amplifying the capabilities. You can feel the winds of change coming. What, um, what this leads us to do is to really have the ability to reimagine what we are capable of as humans and the level of productivity and impact that we can have in our work and our world around us. So let's use that imagination and take you to the sunlit room of a young child. Over to the side are 80s colorful shag carpeting. Off in the living room and a record player is some music, some classical music played by his father. Um, and what uh, you can't see on the top there is in mustard color, there's a shelf of science fiction books and comics and action figures at the ready. So this child is me, and this was my universe. So I was, as a young child, fascinated with science fiction, with superheroes, and um, there was one battle that was endlessly fascinating to me, which was those two characters on the side, on the bottom there. It was Iron Man against Terminator. All right, so on one side, you've got Terminator, with sheer steel determination and unwavering mission that that would that would be completed no matter what. And on the other side, you've got Iron Man, which is a feat of technological wizardry, but inside is Tony Stark, living, breathing human, just like you and me, complete with ethos, with a sense of right and wrong, with ingenuity, with creativity, and a sense of action. And in those battles, even as a young child, something struck me, which was, in the battles, it was usually Iron Man who reigned supreme. And it wasn't purely because of the sheer technological might of the suit that could fly and, and do all these things. It was because of the human inside that had the ability to be creative, to solve problems with passion, with empathy, and reign supreme over the, the Terminator that was always trying to, uh, to step him up. And so that's what I wanted to, to really talk about today. How we take that parallel of Iron Man and use AI as our suit of armor to help us accomplish more. And so there's a fear to this, right? I mean, how many of you, just show of hands, have felt some fear, some trepidation in AI, perhaps it'll take away jobs in the future? Yeah, it's quite natural. So we've seen this really throughout history in every technological progress and innovation, this fear of the unknown, with things that are coming at us. Right? So AI is not some alien technology that arrived by UFO, so let's just quickly understand what it is. It's basically machines or computers that are fed large amounts of data and they identify patterns in that data. And in those patterns, they use them to predict outcomes, to solve problems, um, and even learn from their mistakes. Right? Now, these ideas are nothing new. They've been around since the 1950s. But we've seen this massive progress over the last 10 years because of sheer computational might and ability, cloud computing, as well as the access to data. Right? So that's, that's really what, what AI is. Now, what we've seen throughout history, right, and this is really over the last few hundred years in every one of the industrial revolutions, that there's innate fear of this unknown, of this new development, that AI or whatever the new technology is would come and, and impact us. And so we've seen this all the time, right? New technology, end of the world AI, but the new AI has always been with us with new technologies, and this is from the year 2000. And so that fear, in some ways, is warranted. Right? If you look at that history of the past uh, industrial revolutions, absolutely, certain industries don't exist today, and many jobs don't exist today. In fact, 
in the workplace today, about 40% of the Wolism jobs didn't exist even 50 years ago. So we're seeing this yin and yang of destruction, but also creation with the new technologies. And so that fear is in some ways warranted. Right. Goldman Sachs came out with this just a few months ago. I said that there are 300 million jobs at risk of disruption due just to generator AI right, that came out in November of last year. So that's a big impact. And so what do we do about that? Well, actually, what we've seen over the last 10 years is a very interesting phenomenon. And I've had a bit of personal experience with this. You see, about 10 years ago, I was an executive at, as a, at a large technology firm when the first wave of automation hit. And at that time, we had Oxford University and McKinsey and Economist all forecasting that 47% of jobs globally would be eliminated by automation. Now, what really happened is none of you. In fact, today we're seeing the lowest unemployment of the first of our lifetimes. And so the key is really, as a new technology comes along, not to shut it because we don't understand it, but to try and understand and incorporate it and figure out what are the edges of it and to balance the human abilities with the technologies, always with the underlying empathy, ethics, and inclusion. Okay, so that balance is absolutely critical. And so what, um, what, you know, the, the effect on the, on the workplace today that we're seeing is not just the technology, but how it fuses with the humanity. So let me give you a few examples, right? Anybody heard of the Mayo Clinic in the United States? Okay. So the Mayo Clinic is one of the world's leading oncology research and cancer treatment organizations in the world. And there's a group there, 500 radiologists that use AI to scan images of the human body and identify patterns and anomalies. Now in all of this, there's always a human in the loop. It is always the doctor who is empathetic to the patient and it's the doctor who makes the call on not just the force of treatment, but whether there's a true problem here. Now, the effect of this technology is that more people can get diagnosed earlier with more accuracy than ever before, and that's good for ant cutter. There's a law firm that exists here in Spain, it's a global law firm called Allen and Ogilvy, uh, and Alibi. They have 3,000 lawyers worldwide, and they've been using for the past year, or eight, nine months, uh, generative AI technology, which they call Harvey. And the fear was that this would eliminate the need for paralegals. But what's happened is it's made those paralegals far more accurate, far more productive. And nobody was fired because the executives look at it and they would ask, why would you fire your most productive employees? Right. And so in parallel to the, the, the technology advancements that we see, we have seen the biggest change in the world in a generation. Part of this is the meta trends that were accelerated even before COVID, but through COVID, you talk about the attitudinal changes of generations with letters X, Y, Z as they enter the workforce, together with supply chain disruptions, together with geopolitical forces that we see at work today and their effect on the climate, as Harry mentioned, as well as the economy. Right. And at the same time, we've seen for a decade the biggest decline in productivity growth. So something is at play here in the world of work. And it's no wonder that two out of three workers are feeling tired or feeling that they don't have the capacity, capability, and time to complete the tasks that they're supposed to be doing on a daily basis. And then what does that mean for managers? In fact, 60% of managers are really worried what this means for employee engagement, for burnout, and the effect that it has on innovation and companies. And so this effect on businesses and investors is absolutely massive. And you combine this with 
these new generations that are coming into the workplace and the type of work that they're asked to do. You know, think about repetitive, boring, mundane tasks that people, especially new, new workers who want to come in and make a difference, they want to feel valued and valuable at work. So we've got this technological development in parallel to a fundamental shift in how work gets done. And so, what do we do about this? So let's take a look at the impact of having this Iron Man suit at work. Okay, so we see that if we look at the data coming from workers today, the ones that have embraced any form of AI as part of their daily work, the results are actually pretty incredible. They produce 40% higher quality results and they complete 25% more tasks on top. And so if you're a salesperson, you are feeling the impact of that in your monthly commission chip. And if you're a developer, and 95% of you are using GitHub Copilot to generate more code and more quality code using automated QA tools. It's absolutely fascinating. Now also, a little secret here, if you're using these tools, you are ahead of 90 to 95% of other workers who are not. Right. So when ChatGPT launched, we saw the fastest, the fastest adoption of a new technology that anyone has ever received and seen before. The other thing that we've seen is that there's a 44% churn after the first month of usage. So people are trying it out, but not many have figured out how to successfully incorporate it into their work. So it's an incredible capability that has a direct effect on your success at work. So let's put some money behind this. What? Right. So this is a study that PwC did. And they believe that by 2030, there will be an increase of $16 trillion in global GDP just by the use of AI. Now, how much is 16 trillion? It's over 100 times the amount needed to eradicate hunger globally. Okay, so that's a pretty big number. So what um, the other thing that we see, right? So remember those workers that use AI in, as part of their daily work? What, what does that mean for them, right? What is the ROI? Well, here's the answer. In fact, 83% of CXOs believe that people who have these AI skills in the workplace, this is not data scientists, this is you and me who use AI as part of our daily business, should get higher pay. And 74% should believe, believe that they should get full functional skills. I'm going to give the term on investment for one and each other. So what are the takeaways here? What can we do? as individuals to better ourselves and prepare ourselves for this new world of work and to become more valued and feel more valuable. First of all, educate yourself. Go on courses from Google, from Coursera, from edX, understand what AI is, and even more importantly, what the applications are for in the workplace. Second, understand and differentiate the difference between everyday AI which is those productivity gains that I talked about before, which is really around staying ahead of the competition for game-changing AI, which fundamentally changes business models and operating models, and an outsized effect, a 10x effect on the business. And if you're an executive or a business owner, the cost of doing nothing is going to be degraded. And third, in your workplace, seek out these opportunities to engage in interdisciplinary um, conversations that cut down the silos between sales and marketing and finance and so on. Educate yourself, embrace these tools, whether it's ChatGPT or Claude or Lama or Dali or Don, if you're, if you're a salesperson. And fourth, have a growth mindset. Be a beacon unto others. Share what you learn in communities and be a proponent of this change because it is happening. In fact, I would make the argument that AI is no longer an innovation. It is a fundamental part of the fabric of our technology in the workplace. And those who can figure out how to make and use it more effectively, more efficiently, 
when we become winners in this game. And the most important part of this is not to remain bystanders. Embrace this. This is an incredible opportunity of seismic change in the world, in the workplace, in technologies. You'll see the new generation of workers who come in after you will be AI native, just as Gen Z were digital natives. So this is the opportunity not to stand by, but really to guide this symbiosis, right? to be part of this change, to drive it and create a better tomorrow for all of us. So I thank you and embrace and encourage you to embrace and understand this man and machine to make a better tomorrow for all of us. Thank you very much.